Following the indefinite suspension of the proposed plan by the federal government to remove fuel subsidy, labor leaders in Ogun State have urged the federal government to address corruption surrounding the petroleum sector of the country. State Chairman of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, Emmanuel Bankoli, said corruption in the country's petroleum sector is alarming, hence the need to urgently address it. He urged Nigerians to be vigilant, explaining that the Congress will not allow the government to further compound the current hardships Nigerians are facing. The appropriate pricing, let us produce what we consume. Let our refinery work. It is only then we can now sit down and talk. Again, we also said the governance surrounding petroleum marketing production in Nigeria uh, is hinging so many uh, unethical practices, so many things that is going on in the petroleum sector that is not known to us. And we said, look, the governance structure that we have uh, is uh, laden with corruption. And so we are saying, instead of removing a subsidy now, what you need to do first is to remove corruption that is surrounding the petroleum sector. When you remove that uh, corruption, you'll be sure that you will not have any subsidy to remove. So it's one of our, our prayer and it's one of our requests, our demand to them. So that is where we are. On the strength of government shelving uh, the proposed increase, we are also shelving the protest. We continue to engage. The national leadership will continue to engage because it is not yet Uhuru. Yes, they are putting it on hold. Putting it on hold to do what? And we are saying, one, the refinery must work. The refinery must work. We have no business importing refined product. Our refinery was, must work. We also must have more refinery so that we can produce uh, what we consume locally. We want to go back to that story to take a look at Labour's stance in response to the position of the federal government. And I have joining us the NLC Deputy President, Amechi Ashuguni. Good evening, Mr. Ashuguni. Good evening. Mr. Amechi Ashuguni. Looks like I yes, don't have... Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So is Labour satisfied with the position of the government at the moment? I think uh, by the grace of God, I will be glad to tell you that uh, the proposed protest was intended to restrict federal government from implementing the policy of subsidy removal. And if that same federal government, having felt having felt the impact of mobilization of Congress and have decided to withdraw the policy unconditionally, I think it's a good place to also suspend the action because the intention has been met. But the For us, it's victory. It's victory, but it is a suspension. Yes, it remains a suspension because you hardly can tell what happened tomorrow. So whatever we do, is also a matter of check. So there's no way Labour can go to sleep, but rather to put their eyes and watch any similar policy or action that could also tend to turn that same direction. Labour will certainly resist. But for us, federal government has officially communicated to Labour that they have outrightly suspended unconditionally without any future date of such. And uh, we also have to uh, comply with the policy and the doctrine of uh, Labour Parliament because we have strategies in our engagement. We are also guided by international laws, whereby the purpose in which you propose to go on a particular struggle is met. All you need to call members to tell them is victory uh, has been recorded. It's a far big victory. All right. Well, Nigeria is the only nation that produces oil that relies on import you know, for its domestic fuel consumption. How does that hit you in, in view of the fact that you are against the removal of subsidy? Yes, our, our position remains that the only means to remove subsidy is to see refineries work in Nigeria. And we believe that the best ultimatum to give to government is to restrict them from towing a cheap 
uh, method. Nigerians produce crude and they export crude to also import finished product. Losing employment, losing chances of development, and also empowering our currency. That is an error. Economically, it's wrong and it has to be corrected. So we believe that government, government should do everything humanly possible in ensuring that refineries must work in Nigeria. And that, we think, is a matter of priority. NSC will continue to ensure that policies are engaged in such a way that it will facilitate activating refineries to promote and provide jobs. Because we can't continue to complain of crime when we are doing nothing to actually promote job creation. And the best way to create permanent job for people is to industrialize Nigeria. And the area of PMS is a big factor. These are consumption. People are telling you they want to swap uh, gas to PMS. That is laughable because the same thing will happen. Which gas are you transferring? And how, would, how, would, how do you determine that in the market? That is, a, that is a failure on arrival because what you couldn't do on PMS, that factor will certainly set in. Where you allow factor of demand and supply to drive a business, then that should be locally produced and uh, refined. So we're looking forward to seeing a direction of this domestic product being exported from Nigeria. In such, we will have capacity to sell out and earn income. All right, Nigerians have become so used to this drama that repeats itself from one era to another where labor, uh, we have labor versus government strike this threat and all of that. And at the end of the day, what we find most times is some sort of settlement. We do not find lasting solutions. For instance, uh, Every Niger well, almost every Nigerian knows that turnaround maintenance in this country is almost next to zero. We hear of huge allocations, but our refineries remain very, very non-productive. Yet labor goes into action from time to time. And is this not a repeat of history? The question should be that if not labor in Nigeria, what would have been the case of this nation? Just imagine what has happened today. Assuming there was no labor in Nigeria, as a matter of fact, institution like Nigeria Labor Congress, if there was no NSC in Nigeria, what would have happened to this nation? A country whereby trade union is now the guiding instrument, the monitoring tool to government, to governance. It becomes shameful because when we refer to people gambling, Turn around maintenance, telling you cost of maintenance is higher than the expected income of why refineries you work. You see corruption also turning around the nation. And people will tell you, we want to stop subsidy. We want to promote, uh, allow competition to bring down the price. Where has it happened? In this country, where you have not created the atmosphere that will allow investors to come in, where you have not allowed refinery to work under you as government. If government lacks capacity to put refineries to work, then who then should take that risk? Who do you put to risk to now go and uh, import PMS from other countries in order to sell locally? And before you know it, price will certainly jack to 500 naira, and that will become people that will be penalized on that will be the ordinary people, the barbers, the tailors, and all the informal sectors who pay the price. And we believe that this issue of a, 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 a circle corruption that continue to pull the eyes of Nigeria expectation must stop. I agree with you that history may repeat, but the history we are talking about now is history of Nigeria Labor Congress being able to stop government from going ahead to implement anti-people's policy. Because if this had happened, as they proclaimed, don't forget the initial plan was to implement by next week, February 1st. That was not done. They shifted it to June. NSC continued its mobilization. And now they have suspended indefinitely, meaning that they have to create, they have to make provision for budget for, the final, for, for subsidy. It's not our interest is not to make provision for subsidy. Our interest is to make refineries work. 
it is it will remain a shameful act. It will be a baptism of shame until we make refineries, until okay. we activate the refineries to create jobs. We have not done much. All right, and thank you. Nation, no economy drive in that nation. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Michi Ashugoni, NLC Deputy President, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.